Hello and welcome to my q and I've got a lot of questions to get through so I'm going to get started right away. Starting with CJ, are there any places in the UK that you'd like to visit? Do you know what CJ, I just want to explore the whole of the UK, everywhere. I want to see it all. I just wish we had more time in our lives to see everything. I am particularly attracted to cities I think maybe because I'm from a city because I'm from the city of Cardiff and I know what a lot of diversity and human interaction you can have in those places but yeah there's nowhere specific on my list I just want to explore more and I'm hoping that through this vlogging channel as it grows and maybe I get a bit more ad revenue to fund trips around the UK I'm rather hoping that that will kind of marry in together and it will facilitate me being able to do that and share it with other people in the UK and around the world Let's see how that goes. It's my aim anyway. Now, next one. Oh, everyone wants to know this. Do you think, this is Andrea. Do you think that you and I, B will ever get married or move in together? I will never say that we wouldn't do those things because people's feelings on things change uh, throughout their lives, you know, as we have different experiences and, you know, that sort of thing. At the moment, we're pretty happy. I mean, I think I am. I do check in with him and just check. Are you, are you still happy with this arrangement? And he always agrees. Uh, hopefully he's not just saying that because he thinks it's what I want to hear. But no, I absolutely love having separate households. I love having autonomy. And I also love that when we are together, we tend to spend concentrated quality time focusing on each other a lot more. I know sometimes we both work together, like on our own things, side by side. But even then, we're kind of supporting each other and, and sharing it, like doing it in parallel together kind of thing but you know that said who knows we might feel differently as time goes on about that right Jason if you weren't making videos on YouTube would you still make videos now that's a very good question now you see when I make my videos on YouTube put the paper down because this could be a long one when I'm making my videos on YouTube my daily vlogs I've got a reason for them in my mind I want to be able to do little daily installments of boosting moods of people that watch the videos because this is what I get when I watch vloggers that I like as well I like the fact it it boosts my mood motivates me picks me up on my feet and I'm good to go you know like morale wise so that's one of the reasons I really believe in vlogs and then being on YouTube <laughs> and also because as we go throughout our days all of us every single one of us we discover new things we try out new things we learn new things and we remember them because we've learnt them through that story context the story that is our day and when you daily vlog you can put these in a very concise and succinct form in the story of your day so it's a narrative form so you've got all these little bits and bobs of learning some of them might be just little things like there's a special offer on in Iceland at the moment which could be of benefit or it could be something to do with the English language like uh, yesterday for example I was filming and discovered that bi-weekly had two opposing meanings so just little things like that all sorts of things so I really believe in the purpose of the vlog for those two reasons and they can be inspiring as well they can inspire people to try new things whether it be something different to eat or a new activity to try a new place to visit etc so if I wasn't making videos on YouTube I would only make the videos if I knew that people would be able to see them because I make them for people not for the process of making the videos although I thoroughly enjoy making the videos and I'm excited to edit all my footage no matter how tired I am no matter how late it is no matter how hurried I am or rushed or on a train or in a cafe I'm always excited to get cracking on editing the footage so what was the question again <laughs> let me just make sure I answered it uh, if you weren't making videos on YouTube would you still make videos only if there was an alternative platform similar to YouTube where people could access it without having to pay because I want it to be free for people as well so that's my answer to that one um, Amanda hi Imo are you going on holiday again I definitely will do do you know somebody else was asking uh, later on in the in the Q&A questions because I did uh, read through them so we did want to go in January because I saw a really cheap holiday advertised that we'd been thinking about going on and that kind of fell through but we're just holding off for the moment we're just biding our time we're not rushing to book anything I'm much more focused on getting Izzy safely off to uni making sure she's settled and happy and I just see if any more gigs click into the diary you know and then I'll book a slot according to where I've got free time so definitely I would like to go in November and February if possible but let's let's see how life pans out 
Next one from Katie. Hi Imo, what are you most looking forward to when Izzy goes to uni and you have more free time? I think I probably answered that a lot in um, my predictions of how my life will change, but Basically, what am I looking forward to? Somebody else asked a very similar question, actually. I'm really looking forward to really working more on my YouTube channel and my music, like more than anything, and also travel, being able to go away for weeks on end without worrying that I'm neglecting my parenting duties. You know, but I wanna make sure she's settled and happy before I do that. So there's those things, music and YouTube, basically what I've been doing already for years in a more focused and concentrated way. I'm looking forward to that because they're both really rewarding things to do and they make me feel fulfilled every day. Next, Gillian. Hi Imo, love the videos. As a Northern Irish gal, I was wondering if you think you'll ever pop over to visit this beautiful historic land. Well, I'd love to. I've been to the Republic and I know that's not the same thing. I can link a playlist of when we went to Ballyvaughan for a playing weekend. That was absolutely gorgeous. I'd love to go to Northern Ireland. I hope so. Yes, I'd love to. No plans as of yet. Next, from the Yellow Labrador. Oh, would you and your friends consider making a recording of some of your Kaylee music? Uh, they'd love to hear some Welsh ones as well. Oh, do you know, I'm terrible for this. I love playing live. I love the buzz of live. Seeing the faces, uh, watching the crowd, see how they react, and seeing people coming in relatively flat and leaving with a real buzz is so rewarding. So obviously don't get that with recording. I've been busy I've been busy being a full-time carer, home educator and single parent for 18 years. Not so much the last three, but yeah, maybe at some point <laughs> Um, I may, but I've got to be honest, being a full-time YouTuber and musician, I haven't got a lot of time at the moment, but um, maybe at some point. Do I ever play or listen to classical music? I was classically trained, I did my grade A and all that, did a music degree, although that wasn't strictly classical, it was art music, it was like modern art music, my degree. Um, I do occasionally play it for fun, but honestly I haven't for a couple of years, but I would say I'm capable of it as long as I, you know, practice the pieces properly first. I've maintained my technique so that I could do it and my reading of music, so I could probably, you know, do it on request with a little bit of notice, you know. Right, uh, JB Productions. How did you get into music? I just don't know. I just... As I don't ever remember not wanting to play the flute. I just always wanted to play the flute. And as a kid, I would just be drawn to the sort of, you know, free unstructured improvi improvisatory play. I don't know what that word was. <laughs> Somebody tell me in the comments what I meant to say. I, I would be drawn to playing just free style on my mum's piano, you know, experimenting and listening to the pitches, banging things to hear how they sounded. Just anything I could get my hands on. I did break an arm off a doll and was blowing down the hole in the arm and snapped some fingers off and was, you know, covering up the different holes from red broken the fingers off to hear the different pitches and just, you feel the vibration in you. When you're a wind player, you feel the vibrations of the music in your whole body because it goes into your lungs and your throat and so you feel it on a deeper level than if it's a non-wind instrument. I have dabbled with guitar and piano and bits and bobs and no, it's definitely different. Being a wind instrument player comes with a whole set of challenges that you don't get if it's not a wind instrument, but you feel it physically. A lot more. So how did I get into it? I, don't, I have no idea. I had an innate desire. Has it always been your job? Well, I've been making money from being a musician since I was 16, uh, to a greater or lesser extent. Um, have I always lived in Wales? I haven't always lived in Wales. I was born in Wales, in Cardiff. I uh, moved away to Devon for three years to do my music degree. And I came back and lived and worked in Cardiff. Then I moved to Lisbon, Portugal for one year and then I came back. So that's it, yeah, that's the history of my, wherever I lived. I don't have a very pronounced Welsh accent. No, I don't. My parents were English, or are English, and I just had the family accent. I didn't really pick it up from my peers. I think I was very proud of being different. I loved the fact that I stood out in school because my accent was completely different from everybody else's. And I think different character types feel differently about this. I've known people who felt very self-conscious about not fitting in because they had a very different accent and they would consciously try to fit in with the accent. I was the complete opposite. I loved 
standing out. Um, so that I think it's like a personality thing that stopped me getting that accent. How long have you been vlogging and what inspired you to start vlogging? I well, you'd have to go back and check. I think it's seven or eight years. It might, I might be coming closer to eight years now. What inspired me to start, and I have said this in past Q&As, but I know not everybody has seen them all, so I will repeat myself. I was, at the time, Izzy's skin was so bad. Oh, it was awful. She was in perpetual agony of itching. Like, a lot of people that suffer from itching will tell you itching is worse than pain. She would prefer to scratch it so that it bled and had open wounds rather rather than endure the itching because it was more torturous and it was, oh, it was all over and the medication routine was hideous, having to strip her off and smear gunge on her multiple times per day. It would take a good hour out of our day altogether just to do the creams alone, like in different instalments. So if you think about that over a week, that's like a whole working day, just smearing creams. It was so monotonous and torturous. It impacted every area of her life, everything. And I was just desperate to get out of the country. This has turned into a right tangent. So anyway, I Googled, moving to Portugal because I had a bit of the language and every time I'd taken her there her skin had cleared up and she'd had respite from the itching so I was thinking what if we moved to Portugal and we didn't end up moving to Portugal because logistics <laughs> basically it was just it's a big deal moving to another country on your own with a very medically dependent child. But anyway, through Google searching moving to Portugal, some vlogs came up by a channel called Eight Miles From Home, who are still vlogging in the Philippines, actually. But they were vlogging their move to Portugal, so they'd called a vlog moving to Portugal. And I'd never seen a vlog before, I'd never heard of a vlog, but I saw one vlog of theirs and I thought, that's what I wanna do for the rest of my life. Boom. Decision made. It happened to be theirs that I saw first and I have not looked back since. I spent the first week just making private vlogs for my friends on Facebook rather than putting on YouTube, just on my phone, my iPhone 4 that I had at the time. And I was just, I loved it. I find it really rewarding. How long, everyone wants to know about IB. How long have you and IB been together? Um, we've been together since he was about four. I remember her turning five. Was it five or six? Mm. I'm not sure now. It was in Tenerife. She had a specific birthday in Tenerife. She lost two teeth. <laughs> One went in the swimming pool. She had a birthday in the Easter Bunny. Was it two teeth? I don't know. Well, she lost at least one tooth. So we had the tooth fairy, the Easter Bunny, and it was her birthday all on the same morning. It was ridiculous. Uh, and she was either five or six. I can't remember, but it was that long ago and she's 18 now. What's the best thing about where you live? In the area that I lived previously, it started out with a lot more amenities than it ended up with. They began to dwindle gradually, things were closing down. But here, there's a lot more shops and amenities, you know, virtually right on my doorstep. As a non-driver, that's important to me. It's got good public transport links. And also, it's close enough to the countryside that I can get out in the woods really, really quickly and easily. And there's a lot of different walks that I can potentially do if I wasn't so lazy and, you know, got out on a good long five mile hike or something, which I, I don't tend to do. What's the best thing about being a musician? There are so many good things that I love about being a musician. <laughs> And not least the varied wedding buffet food diet. That is a perk, but no, uh, jokes aside, the buzz of the creativity first and foremost. Even when I'm practicing down in my cellar, that buzz of, oh, I just thought of something new to try, or oh, something clicks into place. I love the buzz of that. I mentioned earlier that I love seeing people coming in with quite a flat mood, maybe a bunch of strangers. You get them going with your Kaylee or your pub gig or whatever it is, and they're gradually, they're sort of united by the central focus of what you're doing. I think Kayleys are more unity than just a pub gig, because sometimes people can just choose not to listen. But usually, you know, they get involved, they're singing along, they're dancing, and it provides a central focus for that group of people that they can find that central focus as something in common with each other and it, it's a catalyst for socialising and it, it gives me a great buzz and a pleasure to see that. So that's one of the things I wouldn't want to give up. I get to mix with a lot of people. Like I was saying to IB this morning, cause he was still here, I was saying, you know, having traditional music as a hobby, I can remember being 22 years old and thinking, you know, among my friends, I've got GPs, I've got people with like really, really high up positions. I've got students. I've got shop assistants, 
window cleaners, uh, but also people that sell Big Issue as well. People from all walks of life, different nationalities as well. These are all my friends. What a diverse friendship group because we're united by traditional music. And once you get in that session, everybody's equal, you know. It's nice. Uh, so that's a good thing. <clears throat> also, I get to see, even as just a humble Kaylee musician, you know, I haven't hit the big time or anything, I'm a job in musician, you know, but I get to go to so many different interesting places and I think it's really broadened my horizons mentally, like, I think I'd live in a smaller bubble of my own, of my life experience if I hadn't been a musician because I just get to see so many different places, even within the UK. Do you think you'd ever have any pets? No, because I aspire at least to be away from home a lot. And uh, I, yes, yeah, too much responsibility. Izzy's allergic to cats, dogs, mice, horses. <laughs> She's allergic to cockroaches, but I wouldn't have a pet cockroach. Any advice for people starting a YouTube channel or how to be more confident filming in public? My advice is just start. Even if you don't publish them, at first, even if you maybe only publish them to a small group of trusted friends like on Facebook, you know, while you may be getting an idea of what is important not to publish for your safety, for example, you can comfortably publish anything with your friends, you know, you can reveal your location, film outside your front door, talk about where you're going to be and when, whereas you can't do that on YouTube and it takes a bit of getting it into your head, like what you can and can't include and as for filming in public just do it um <laughs> and don't care what people think like don't even try to put your mind into their minds i know that people say you must always try to see things from other people's point of view yeah you just don't when you're vlogging <laughs> unless of course you're being inconsiderate if you're just shouting with it and you're disturbing them that's one thing but no i, I had a bit of a, a related revelation moment when i was about 18 and i was doing a pub gig and it was a very silly pub gig and we were all kids. I think I was the oldest one in the band and I had dinosaur slippers on, a tea cosy on my head with a big clip on flower, fluorescent shirt and dungarees with all embroidery on, something ri ridiculous like that anyway. And you know, obviously I went on thinking, oh no, what's everyone gonna think? And I thought, hang on, why do I need to concern myself with what they think and what they can see? Why don't I just think about what I can see? I can see them. I can see the monitors on the floor. I can see the stage, the lights. Uh, that's all I need to worry about. I don't need to care what they think. So there we are. And I'm kind of like that with, with vlogging really. And also, like, I don't worry what people will think because I think, well, they'll think I'm a YouTuber because most people know what YouTubers are. The people that stare are older people, like my age and older, but youngsters just know, they, they just know you're vlogging. And it's like, they just take it in their strides. Titan, Titan, oh. Do you know, these days, YouTubers change the way we see your channel names or your account names. We get this at and then all sorts of malarkeys and it's hard to see, but it's Titan somebody. I know you enjoy traveling, but is there somewhere you wouldn't travel to and why? Um, I would love to broaden my horizons with going to more exotic places. Again, this morning I was saying to IB, do you know, I've really played it safe, especially since becoming a mum and I've really stuck to touristy areas, package deals maybe, but I would like to visit off the beaten track places, but I would research what's going on in that time safety wise. So I wouldn't go to somewhere, for example, where there was a war or there'd just been an earthquake. You know, I'd, I'd research it and make sure it was safe and stable enough to go. Other than that, I can't think of anywhere I wouldn't want to go. <laughs> I'd probably say somewhere really cold, but actually no, I probably still would because IB would like it and it'd make him happy. Um, I think it'd probably be spectacular to see some glaciers. <laughs> Richard asks, would you and IB ever consider getting a van or a motorhome for trips away? IB has a van and he's been gradually converting it. He's got these great visions of driving around Europe and it, exploring. And I've got these uh, great visions of him just finding it too squalid and not enjoying it. Because <laughs> he's, he's kitting it up in a real sort of basic way in which you can take everything out and just use it as a work van. So it's like got a dual use, so it's not going to have fixed things. It's going to be like tables stuck in with bungee cords and things like that and a blow up mattress that just gets blown up. Um, he's thinking of getting a great big awning as well for it. So yeah, he has got one. He thinks he's going to love it and I just, I, I know him. He likes to be comfortable. I don't think he is going to be comfortable in it. I think it's going to be too cramped for him. 
Uh, but we'll see about that. Mary says, would you please show us your colours of nail polish that you wear and if you got more recently? Also, are you into collecting cookbooks or does it all come out of your own self? All comes out of my own self. I don't read cookbooks. If I want to know something specific like how to make an apple pie, I Google it. Right, let's show you the nail polish. Here is an array of nail polish that I prepared earlier. Now, these are the ones I bought. No. Yes. Yeah, mm, I think I bought that one. I'm not sure. I bought these. These are mine. <laughs> mine, mine. Barry M. Blue, pink and clear. That's like a top coat and undercoat. Don't look at them now, they're coming off. I think I bought that for myself on holiday. Maybe you're at Demar, somewhere like that. Or maybe Izzy bought it for me because I asked for it as a Mother's Day present. All these ones Izzy's given me because she doesn't want them anymore and um, occasionally I try them out but I've got out of the habit of painting my nails and I'm going to try and get back into the habit because it's kind of fun. Next question from Mystery Decide on the Day. <laughs> Strange question, can you play your flute very fast? I was watching the proms the other night, perhaps you could show us one time. So I pre-recorded a clip the other day when I was doing my practice because I knew this was coming up. I shall insert that here. Ta -da! <laughs> Will that do? I've had another question from Donnie's Weekend Van Life Travel. He wants to know, this has already come up, but what got me wanting to do music as a career? Was it an artist or a family member? No, I, as I said earlier, I have no idea. I was just innate. I had to do it. Mandy Davis says, Hi Imo, I really enjoy all your adventures you do in Wales. What is your most favourite place you have been to in Wales and why? Well, it's a bit of a, I don't know if this is a soppy answer, but it's St Fagan's, like, I can't remember what it's called these days. Welsh History Museum, Museum of Welsh History. I've vlogged there a lot of times. I'll leave a playlist to that at the end and in the description, maybe in the top pinned comment if anyone wants to see it. It's somewhere that I went to a lot of times as a child, took Isabel to a lot of times as a child, Well, my dad took us actually because he used to drive us there. If you don't know what it is, it's a museum, but it comprises of lots of open land, like, fields, woods, etc. But also it's got loads of different buildings that have been reconstructed from original buildings, brick by brick, exactly as they were, and furnished for a specific period in their history. It's absolutely fascinating. It's completely free to get into. They've got wonderful, extensive gardens, grounds as well. So it's interesting if you're into horticulture. <laughs> but it's also interesting if you're into history, they've got a little cafe, they do ice cream, it's just an absolutely fabulous day out. You have to pay for the parking, or you can go on the bus, or you can park around the back for free on the streets and go in the castle end, but I'm really emotionally attached to that place. It has a great place in my heart. But there's so many fabulous places in Wales. But anyway, that was what immediately sprang to mind, so I thought, well, it must be that then, mustn't it? Julie Pearson asks, don't worry, we're nearly at the end, we're nearly at the end. <laughs> This is the last one, because I've already answered the last one earlier. Right, hi Imo, says Julie. Is your mum musical? My mum will be sitting there going, oh, oh, they're talking about me. <laughs> Does she play anything like you and your dad? Yes! I mentioned uh, playing on my mum's piano earlier when I was a kid. Yes, she started out on the piano and she also plays piano accordion. Anyway, this was long. Uh, I don't even know how long. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching it. I shall continue in the next video with a normal vlog. Thank you again for watching. Please give the video a like if you haven't. I like it. Subscribe down below to watch more videos from me. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!